Clint and Vicky from One Life to Live, not only daytime royalty, but probably one of the greatest loves of all. Today we're taking a special look at this super couple on this One Life to Live flashback. Clint and Vicky, the super couple origin story. Clint Buchanan, played by actor Clint Ritchie, and Victoria Lord Riley Buchanan, played by actress Erica Slezak. <laughs> Vicky's first husband, Joe Riley, was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor, and concerned for the welfare of his family and the banner, he invited an old friend to come to town and fill his shoes. Enter Clint Buchanan. Joe was sick. And uh, he stayed out very, very late one night. And I was very worried. And then suddenly the door opened, and there stood Joe, drunk. And beside him was a cowboy. Sorry, sweetheart. We just got to drinking and talking, and time just got away. Yes, I'm very aware of the fact that you've been drinking. And if I have you to thank for that, sir, or if you are under the impression that you can continue the party here, I'm terribly sorry you cannot. Uh, no, well, ma'am, I'm... Uh... I'm sure sorry I led this gentleman down the path of sin. But I am certainly aware that the party's over. I'm just delivering him to you. I'm on my way out. No, hold it just a minute. You have to stay, Clinton, and get to know my gorgeous wife. That is exactly what he said. you got to meet my gorgeous wife. <laughs> this is the other half of uh, Lord Enterprise. No, oh, hold it just a minute. No, sweetheart, you're giving the gentleman the wrong impression of our relationship. Uh... <clears throat> Mr. Buchanan is going to be the managing editor of the banner. When Clint and Vicky met, it was fireworks from the start. Although it wasn't Vicky who first caught his eye, he had a brief fling with Dory. Congratulations, it was thrilling. Clint, let me kiss the winner. Excuse oh. me. You won the race fair and square, Clint. Yeah, Vicky, but I don't think I should have done it. I mean, uh, Asa takes things like this pretty serious, and after all, it is his party and all. Come on, partner. I'm going to buy the winner a drink. Hello? Hi, Clint. Are you, uh... Despite Dorian's best efforts, Clint still had eyes for Vicky. Hello, you two. Hi, Vicky. Excuse me. Could I please have a glass of grapefruit? Yes, of course. Thank you. Well. Vicky, isn't Clint divine? I just absolutely adore him. Clint and Vicky got past Dorian and the maniacal Ted Clayton and found that they really were in love with each other. Clint knew he loved Vicky, but Vicky wasn't really ready to settle down yet. You're not throwing me out, are you? No, of course not. I'm glad of that because I, uh, I kind of maneuvered this, you know. I, uh, I mean, I herded those folks out of here because I, well, I wanted to be alone with you. Doggone it, Ricky, I'm not real handy with words when it comes to this kind of thing, but you must know how I feel about you. And even though Vicky wasn't ready yet, Clint still tried his best. My word. On a surprise trip to New York, Clint and Vicky got to really know each other. Fire genius. And I love the way you are corrupting me. Mm. Oh, ho. Does that give me license to further your corruption? <laughs> that is a highly debatable point, which we will continue to debate. Mm. Okay. Oh, look! Look, Clint, there's that famous toy store. They strolled through Central Park in a carriage. Stopped by F.A.O. Schwartz, where Clint gave Vicky a big teddy bear, before going to a romantic dinner. What's that? That's for you. Me? Well, you said your father only gave you expensive, fragile dolls, didn't you? Oh, yes, but... So, now you have your very own cuddly teddy bear. Oh, you are a very sweet man. Of course, you might have to fight Kevin Joy. As long as I don't have to feed him. <laughs> He's wonderful, and I love him. Thanks so much. Well, thank you. <laughs> Shall we get Ludwig back to the hotel? I think he looks like a Ludwig, don't you? Ludwig, can you play the piano? <laughs> Let's go. 
Thank you. Despite the obstacles, Clint and Vicky's love for each other eventually won out, and they became engaged and eventually married for the first time at Landfair. Will you marry me? In token and pledge of the vow between us made. In token and the pledge of the vow between us made. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. In token and pledge of the vow between us made. In token and pledge of the vow between us made. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. I do pronounce that they are husband and wife together. Those whom God hath joined together, let no one put asunder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so doggone proud of you snagging this lovely lady. Mm. Tell you the truth, I'm kind of proud of myself. And Vicki, I'm real proud and happy to welcome you to the Buchanan family. Thank you very much, Ace. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this for the last couple of years. Now you're really my wife. And I'm proud of it. And Mrs. Buchanan, the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Thank you, Mr. Buchanan. I don't want this moment ever to end. I feel so at peace. Clint and Vicky were happily married for several years until Countess Echo de Savoy came into Landview. It turned out that Clint and Echo had a past together. Clint and Echo had a one night affair in a cabin. That made Echo want to ruin their marriage. You have lied continuously and I don't trust you at all. I will not even give you 60 seconds of my time. Vicki, I have the right to talk to you. And you have the right to know that your husband seduced me. He did everything he could to fall in, to make me fall in love with him. When we were in the cabin, I fought that. But I love him, Vicki. I love him as much as you do. And just to set the record straight about what Echo said in your office, the about a question of an affair. Well, there was no affair. There was no beginning. There was no end. There was just... It was just that one night. I love you. Vicky did still love Clint. Not happy that Clint's one night stand with Echo didn't break up Clint and Vicky, Echo devised another plan. No, Echo! Let go of me! No! No, I'm going Echo! No, no. During an argument and struggle on the Front Street Bridge, onlookers Vicky and Dorian watched in horror as Echo threw herself over the bridge. Clint dove in after her, but that didn't stop them from charging him with Echo's murder. He was eventually exonerated from her murder when she showed back up. Vicky stuck by Clint's side through the murder trial, and Clint stuck by Vicky's side through her bout with Nikki Smith. But tragedy turned to triumph for Vicky and Clint when she announced she was pregnant with his first child. I'm going to have a baby, darling. Did you hear me? We're going to have a little Buchanan, boy or girl, yours and mine. Well, you wouldn't tease a fellow about something like oh, this. Oh, no, one. sweetheart. I'm going to have your baby. I'm, I'm speechless. Oh, my sweetheart. I, I gave up. Uh, I gave up even hoping. I mean, we haven't gotten pregnant after you. All these years, I... You know what had happened? It must have happened at the Waterside Inn. That night that you brought me back from Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> a baby? Oh, my. Cliff Buchanan is going to have a baby! 
It's not entirely accurate, though. <laughs> my very own son, or, or do, twins. Did you check for twins? <laughs> no. Did Kevin and Julian them? No, I thought I was going to tell Papa first. Honey, that settles it. We have to get married today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why? I'm sorry. Oh, boy, do you have a lot to learn. <laughs> well, yes, I do have a lot to learn about babies, anyway. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join Clint and Victoria in the bonds of matrimony, which is blessed by God and graced by our Lord's presence at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Clint, Will you take this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep only unto her, so long as you both shall live? I will. Victoria, will you take this man to be your wedded husband, to live together in the holiest state of matrimony. Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep only unto him so long as you both shall live? In September 1986, Vicky gave birth to Clint's firstborn child, Jessica. Oh, that music to my ears. There's another one coming. Another deep cleansing breath, Vicky. Another deep oh. And push, Vicky. Push. 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 It's coming. It's coming, Vicky. What are you doing standing out here? Break open the champagne and light the cigars. I just had a baby. <laughs> She hasn't stopped smiling since we put her in the bassinet. Oh. I didn't think baby smiled. I thought it was gas. Well, just take a look at her. Look, darling, it's true. She's smiling. Just look at her. You can't stop looking at her. Sweetheart, we've done some things wrong, and we've done some things right. This is the rightest thing we've ever done. There you go. Go to your daddy. Got her? Later, in a surprising twist, we found out that Vicky really gave birth to twins, Natalie and Jessica. But because of Allison Perkins and Maria Roberts and Mitch Lawrence's brainwashing, Natalie was not reunited with her parents until many years later. <laughs> Whether it was real or just a dream, Clint Buchanan was presumed dead in 1988, and he traveled back a hundred years to 1888. For months, everybody thought Clint Buchanan was dead, including Vicky. She had to travel all the way back in time to save him, though. But that's a whole nother story. Let's skip forward a little. How can we ever thank you for the help you've given us? Be happy. Measure your time, not by the hours, but by the stars. Go in peace. It was a joyous reunion when the two were finally reunited in the present time, 1988. They even decided to renew their vows once more in a small private ceremony, just the two of them. Okay, now you can look. But honey, we, we don't have a gazebo. Wrong. We didn't have a gazebo. Now we have a gazebo. Sweetheart, how did you manage it? Well, with a lot of help from our friends at the lumber yard and uh, Cord, Gilbert. <sighs> Hi, Clint. To reaffirm my vow to my wedded wife, Victoria. To have and to hold from this day forward 
for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part. I, Victoria, do reaffirm my vow to my wedded husband, Clint, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part. Obstacles came and went over the years, but they were pretty happy until Dorian Lord and Sloane Carpenter showed up. Vicky was having an affair with Sloane Carpenter, and Dorian couldn't wait to let Clint know all about it. To get the full effect, you would have to imagine a, a blow-up photo of uh, Vicky and Sloane. The society queen and the general ride the rails to romance. Something like that. Oh, dear. You didn't know that your star reporter was with her new man, did you? My, that must be a bitter pill to swallow. I didn't know Clint was going to be here. Want to leave? It's too late. No, no, of course we shouldn't leave. Come on, we started this. We might just as well see it through to the end. As the years went by, and a couple marriages, Clint and Vicky continued to work alongside each other at the banner. They continued to fight, and they almost even got back together once. I just felt like something else was going on. All I'm asking for is a couple of hours with you alone. I mean, just the two of us, just to be us. Not, not co-workers or parents or exes or anything else. Just Clint and Vicky. Oh, where would we go? Wherever you want. Don't even suggest a motel. Vicky, it never entered my mind. Yeah. Never right. entered my mind. Oh. How about your mountain cabin? Oh, are you serious? Yes, it's a beautiful drive, and it's not that far away. We used to have wonderful times up there. Now, what better place to go to, you know, to kick back and enjoy each other's company? And just be the two of us for a couple hours. That's a really good idea. <laughs> you know something? It does appear the music is over. Well then, uh, what do you say, baby? You want to blow the joint? Crazy man, crazy. <laughs> After accidentally getting high with Dorian and Renee, Clint had to put Vicky to bed she woke up to hilarious circumstances. You know, a scream isn't exactly my standard wake-up call, but uh, good morning. Another day? Isn't it? I don't believe this. Did you undress me last night? And then you slept in my bed? On your bed? Oh, oh, on. Oh, thank you so much for the clarification. That's really comforting. Now, don't go getting yourself all worked up into a lather. What? You had no right. No right to what? To undress you? Uh-huh. Come on, Vicky. it's not like I don't know the territory. Oh, how dare you? Vicky? we were married. Besides, last night you were in no condition to undress yourself, remember? No. Well, now, you know, I didn't think you would. You passed out, you know, in my arms. Oh, my God. I stayed around because I was worried about you. I didn't know what you'd had to drink or how much or... 
If you were going to get sick during the night. I didn't have anything to drink. Not a drop. I had uh, tea. I remember that. Yeah, right. Maybe the kind that was uh, popular during Prohibition. I swear to you, I drank tea. tea. It was made from some kind of Amazonian plant or tree or something. Really? And just where did you have this little tea party? At Dorian's. Renee was there. She drank the tea. God, we were laughing at something. And then we went up to Dorian's room and we... We tried on her clothes. But then I... After that, it's all blank. Did you and I... I mean... Did last night... Did... Did we? No. What are you guys yelling about? Oh, my God. Only they kept fighting and fighting. Want to eat by the pool? It's going to be dark in an hour. We can uh, skinny dip after dinner. Or I could throttle you first. What? Why? I don't want you to try and arouse me, okay? Did it work? I'm serious. I'm going to check on the steaks. Oh, that's right. Walk away. No, just put the fight on hold until I turn the beat. It's not a fight. Look, if something walks like a fight, sounds like a fight, and looks like a fight, it's probably a fight. Clint, will you just stay here? Stay here and, and, and communicate. I don't care what you call it. It isn't worth ruining two prime fillets. <laughs> so now what do we do about dinner? Lick the tomato off the wall? Hey, we got soft-shell crabs. I hate soft-shell crabs, Vicky. I wanted steak. Oh, okay, then you can have salad. I hate salad. I wanted steak. Oh, you're angry. Yes, you better believe it. Well, it's about time. Look, I'm hungry. I wanted steak. And this, this is your fault. Oh, no, Clint. No, no, no. This is not about food. This is about Sloan. <laughs> Fine, you want me to be angry about Sloan? You're right. I am angry about Sloan. I am damn angry. You know, Vicky, you hit a mule with the two before and you will get his attention. And he won't forget it. Well, I guess that's me. I am the mule. The mule that kept your family's company afloat all these years. And adopted your kids. Loved them like they were my own. Sat up with Joey at night when he had his asthma attacks. Stood by Kevin when he was accused of rape. Held you when Megan died. Fought to help you walk and talk again after the stroke. And put up with Nikki Smith and Dorian, not to mention Tina and on and on and on. All the rest of it. He didn't let me down. Well, no, that's the mule for you. I mean, he might be stubborn and he might be crude, but by God, he is steady. He just keeps plugging along and getting the job done. Now, he's not a thoroughbred like Sloan Carpenter, no siree. But he gets the job done. I would have done anything for you. Hell, I did. And why? Because I loved you, and I loved you more than life. And what did I get? You dumped me. You threw me away. You threw me away like a dirty shirt. Why? Well, I guess I wasn't classy enough for you. So was I angry? Damn straight I was angry. Still am. Now, is that what you wanted to hear? I guess so, yeah. Well, then you got what you wanted, just like always. And they kept fighting. Come on, Mom. Nice work. Oh, thanks, boss. I love this job. <laughs> and more fighting. Hey. Welcome. You don't have to walk far. Oh, right okay. there. Hello, Ted. God. Hey. 
Oh, it's so nice to see you. Well, it's nice to see you, too. Thank you. Thank you. You look wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you some bread here. I'll have the pasta primavera, please. Salute. To better days. I hope I didn't keep you waiting long. No. Oh, we just got here. So did the rolls. Well, we can roll off to another place if you want. Oh, I think I'm perfectly capable of eating lunch here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you seem kind of... I'm fine. Well, that's fine. Muriel and I have had some transcendent arguments in restaurants. Yeah, well, you won't see one today. Vicky and I don't duke it out in public. Oh, maybe we can change things. I I'm sorry? Well, I didn't give you the warmest of sister-in-law greetings, did I, when we last met? I thought we could start over again. Well, that's pretty much why I'm here. I'd really like to get to know you. Mm -hmm. Besides, Vicky and I aren't married anymore. I told her this was a lousy idea, but she doesn't listen to a word I say. So we don't have anything to fight about. Because she's smart, huh? <laughs> Except maybe a nasty little habit of eavesdropping. That's absurd. But then what do you expect uh, from someone whose notion of problem solving is to fire a tomato at a man's back? Oh, that's an interesting projectile. I mean it. I'd really glad to be part of your family. I realized that it must have been a shock when Todd and I were married so suddenly. It just seemed right. The sad truth is there are some people who are so thick-headed and so insensitive that they only respond to outright behavior. And some people only pretend to be civilized. Excuse me, I don't think that's fair. Well, you would know, wouldn't you? Because you started this fuss in the first place. Wait, no, no, hold on a second. Wait, I can speak for myself. Blair initiated the divorce. Todd just followed through on it. The problem is, it takes two to be civilized. Oh, give me a break. You wouldn't know civilized behavior if it bit you on the behind. Do you know what? I am getting sick and tired of you telling me how and how not to act. What's your problem? I'm fine. I told you that. Fine. You won't hear another word from me, however accurate it may be. May I suggest that in response, you go and try and figure out just exactly whom you are so angry at and why? Vicky! Hmm? Stop it! Oh, that's a civilized response. Damn it, woman! Was it something in the food? Uh, it's more likely something in the air, which means it ain't over yet, and I am not about to miss a single moment. Cheers. Clint kept pursuing Vicky, though, and he asked her to decide if he would marry her one more time while she was away on a cruise. While she was away, she realized that Clint was the one that she wanted to marry again. Dorian, I realized that I have always worried so much about being in control of myself. And that's a waste of time. Because it's much more important just to love and to be capable of being loved. Oh, that is enormous. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so simple, isn't it? And yet I fought that for so long. I wouldn't even allow myself to recognize this one great big sustaining love that has been a part of my life for so long. No matter how I rearranged my life, that love was there. Always was and still is there. So I'm awfully glad I came to my senses and understood that I don't want to be alone. Actually, I've never been alone. And I need never be. Well, I realized... Ricky! <laughs> You're in love with Clint! That's very astute of you. You're in love with Clint? Oh, any fool could have seen it. Well, it just took this one quite some time, though. I'm going home now, and why don't we have lunch next week one day, and we can talk about Kevin and Cassie's wedding, and if all goes well, my wedding too. Oh! Well, this is great. I mean, all of you here at the same place? That's good, because I've got something... Uh, Kind of important to tell you. Oh, I think Mom has something to tell you, too. Oh, your mom's back from her cruise? I thought she had uh, another week or so. No, well, she cut it short since she heard about Todd. She's pulling some kind of a mystery, Clint. She's telling us that she's going to tell us something, but she won't give us a hint until she talks to you. Clint? Hi. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. 
see you. <laughs> you look mighty fine, Vicky. Thank you. So do you. Um, would you all just excuse us one second? I just have to talk to you. Clint. Um, I've been thinking a lot about you and, you know, what we discussed just before I left. No, we don't need to go into that right now. Oh, yes, we do. Believe me. I have thought about nothing else the whole time that I was gone. It's as if there was a puzzle I was trying to fit together, and then once all the pieces fit, I couldn't wait to come back. You remember Lindsay? Yes, yeah, sure. Lindsay Rappaport, right? Oh, actually, it's Lindsay Buchanan. That's right. We're married. Only Vicky waited too long. Thanks for watching. Please check out my other One Life to Live flashback playlists and my other soap opera shows on my channel.